We all think we know what infinity is, right? Something that just goes on forever. But what if I told you that for over 150 years, mathematicians have known that there are different sizes of infinity? And what if I told you that a brand new discovery has just uncovered a totally new kind of infinite, one that might just break everything we thought we knew about the universe of math? Okay, you're going to want to stick around for this. So let's just start with the big question that kicked this whole thing off. Are all infinities the same size? I mean, your gut instinct probably says, yeah, of course, infinity is infinity. But as it turns out, the answer is a huge, resounding no. So here's how we're going to unpack this. We'll start with a little thought experiment, see how that led to different sized infinities, check out the ladder they all seem to form, and then get to the really wild part, the new discovery that might just shatter that ladder completely. To even talk about different infinities, we first got to have a way to compare them. And for that, we need to go back about 150 years to this absolutely brilliant mathematician, George Cantor. Cantor set up this imaginary competition. On one team, you've got the natural numbers, you know, the ones you count with, one, two, three, and so on, forever. On the other team, you've got just the even numbers, two, four, six, forever. Now, common sense screams that there have to be twice as many natural numbers as even numbers, right? But Cantor had this clever idea. What if we just try to pair them up one to one? You take any natural number, let's call it n, and you can always find its even partner, which is just 2n. And here is where things get really weird, because you can always find a partner for every single number on both teams, neither side ever runs out of players. And that leads to a totally mind-bending conclusion, their infinities are the exact same size. Yep, even though one set seems like it should be half the size of the other, in the world of the infinite, they are equal. So this first size of infinity, which includes all the whole numbers, the even numbers, odd numbers, even all the fractions, it got a special name, countable infinity, or all if not. For a long time, this was kind of the baseline, you know, the smallest possible flavor of infinity. But Cantor didn't stop there, not by a long shot. He knew there were other kinds of numbers out there, ones that just didn't play by the same clean, simple rules. He turned his focus to what we call the real numbers. Now, this group has all the countable numbers we just talked about, but it also includes what are called irrational numbers. You know, numbers with decimals that go on forever and ever without repeating, like pi or the square root of two. They're just fundamentally messy. And when he tried to pair the nice, neat, natural numbers with these messy, real numbers, well, the competition was a total blowout. It turns out that between any two whole numbers, like say one and two, there isn't just one real number, there is an entire infinity of them. The one-to-one -one pairing just completely falls apart. And that proved it. There is a bigger, uncountable infinity out there. This discovery just blew the doors wide open. For the next century and a half, mathematicians kept finding more and more sizes of infinity, each one bigger and more powerful than the last. It was like they were building a ladder to the sky. And they started to assemble this ladder of infinities. Way down at the bottom, you've got our friendly countable infinity. A step above that, the uncountable infinity of real numbers. And then, they discovered things called large cardinals. Infinities so unbelievably huge that just knowing they exist can prove things about all the smaller infinities below them. Each new type they found was so ridiculously vast, it made the last one look tiny. All of this neat hierarchy led to a really powerful idea called the HOD conjecture. Now, let's not get bogged down in the technical details. The important thing to know is that this is basically the belief that the universe of mathematics is fundamentally structured and, well, definable. It suggests that all these infinities, no matter how wild they seem, have a proper place, a specific rung on this ladder. It's a universe where everything fits together nicely. For decades, this clean, orderly picture was the working assumption. Anytime a new infinity was found, we just find its spot on the ladder. Until, a paper published very recently changed everything. Three mathematicians, Juan Aguilera, Joan Bagaria, and Philip Luque, introduced a new type of large cardinal. And let me tell you, it's a real troublemaker. Why? Because it just doesn't seem to fit anywhere in the established hierarchy. They called them exacting cardinals. And what makes them so disruptive is their core property. See, unlike all the other infinities that actually help reinforce the orderly structure of math, exacting cardinals are defined by a kind of fundamental messiness they introduce into the universe of sets. And here's the real kicker. If these exacting cardinals exist, it implies that the HOD conjecture is false. In math terms, that's V is not equal to HOD, 
But for the rest of us, that translates to a radical, mind-blowing idea. The universe of mathematics is not as neatly structured as we thought. It's fundamentally wilder, messier, and more chaotic than our old map ever suggested. So this discovery isn't just about adding a new concept. It actually forces a choice. It presents us with two completely different competing pictures of reality, a real fork in the road for mathematics. So, which is it? On one side, we could be living in the orderly universe we've always assumed, where that HOD conjecture is true. But if that's the case, it means these new exacting cardinals are totally incompatible with other powerful infinities we already know about, like the ones near the very top of our ladder. It would mean two perfectly consistent mathematical ideas literally cannot exist in the same universe. Or we live in a messy universe where exacting cardinals do exist, which proves our neat and tidy ladder of infinities was, at best, a wildly incomplete picture of a much, much stranger reality. The authors themselves put it best. No matter which of those paths turns out to be true, their discovery means one thing for sure, and I'm quoting them directly here. The results of this paper suggest that we have to change something about the way we think of large infinities. The implication is just massive. Our entire map of infinity is basically due for a rewrite. It's just such a profound reminder that even in a field like mathematics, which is built on pure logic and proof, the map is never the territory. Discoveries like this show us that the universe of ideas is always, always bigger than we imagine, and that leaves us with one thrilling question. What's next?